I'm back with another video tutorial. This time we're going to be taking a look on how to build a simple video player with Flash Professional CS3. So let's jump over to Flash. So I'm in Flash and I'm actually working with an ActionScript 2 document. So in this particular tutorial we're, we're going to be using behaviors. It's the simplest way to do what I'm going to show you. Um, and to make sure you're working with an ActionScript 2 document just go to your properties panel and it'll tell you right here if your document is ActionScript 2, 3, 1, or, or so forth. Uh, behaviors will not work in ActionScript 3, so you'll want to make sure to go into your settings and choose ActionScript 2. All right, so I have two layers. I have a buttons layer and a video layer. I have three buttons on my uh, screen and my workspace, my design area. And the reason I know they're buttons is because when I click on it and bring up my property inspector, it says that it's a button. So I've created a button symbol. A button symbol in Flash has four states, an up, over, down, and hit. I'm only using the up and over to do kind of a rollover effect. Let's go back to our main scene. The first thing I need to do is I need to bring in my video. So I'm going to hit Option or Apple R, Control R on the PC, which will bring in my import dialog box. And... I'm going to go ahead and select my Flash video file. Now, what if you don't have a Flash video file? Well, if you have QuickTime or Windows Media or some other video formats that Flash supports, you can actually encode it on the fly. So this import or video import dialog box will turn into a video encoder, and you can import encode it into Flash video and then bring it into your project. So I selected my Flash video. I then am going to choose how I want to deploy my video. I'm going to use progressive download from a web server. This is going to give us HTTP streaming capabilities from any web server. So whether you're running Apache, IIS, or others, you'll be able to have a pseudo streaming experience and it will work with Flash Player 7 or later. So we hit continue. And we're going to use progressive. You could also use streaming if you have a Flash Media server or you can embed it into the Swift. But we're not going to go into that during this tutorial. So next we choose a skin. We can choose a variety of skins. There's 32 different ones available to you. A skin is looks like this, so it has different controls built into it. We're going to choose, uh, let's see, let's choose this one right here. So this one is a very simple skin. It has a play button and a mute button. I'm going to hit continue. It's going to give me a little summary of my import. And I'm going to hit finish. And it's going to drop it into our stage. I'm actually going to Apple X this and paste it back onto my video layer. I should have been on there to begin with. So there's our video. Here's our buttons. The next step is that I want to give my video or my that's sitting inside of my FLV playback component an instance name. We're going to call it my video. And we're going to be using that when we add behaviors to our buttons. The next step is that I need to add some cue points inside of here. So the cue points are going to allow me to determine or allow these buttons to jump to different timestamps <clears throat> inside of the video. So they're going to act as little reference points. So to do that, I'm going to bring out my component inspector. If yours is not showing in your workspace, just go to Window and Component Inspector, and it'll bring it out for you. I'm going to set Autoplay to True. You can set it to False if you want. So basically, when the viewer opens the page with this video on it, it's going to automatically play. I'm then going to add my cue points. This is what we're most interested in. So I select this area here, and I go to my magnifying glass, and it opens up my Flash Video Cue Points dialog box where I can begin, begin adding my cue points. The first one is going to be called intro and we'll just set that at one second into the video. I'm going to add another one called down the hill. You can call them whatever you want, just remember their names because you're going to be adding behaviors and referencing these cue points. And this will be five seconds into my video. So this is a very short video file I'm using. Uh, and then the last one I'm going to call finish. And I'm going to set that about nine seconds into the video. 
and I click OK, and I've just added all my cue points. Now I can set up my behaviors with my buttons. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of my component inspector, just drag it up to the top, and I'm going to click on a button, bring out my behaviors panel. If it's not showing, just go to Window Behaviors, and I'm going to add an FLV playback control behavior called Seek, seek to Cue Name. So there's my instance of my video, so I click on that. I'm going to call it Intro. I'm going to hit OK. I'm also going to add a toggle play pause. So when I click on it, it will play. And when I click again on it, it will pause. And we're going to actually modify that in just a little bit so it only plays when I click on these buttons. So I'm going to do the same thing for coming down the hill. My video down the hill. Add that toggle play and pause. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for finish line. Seek to cue name, my video, and this is finish. And I'm going to also add a toggle play and pause. And there we go. So now what we can do is we can play our video. Let's test it out and just make sure it's working. So I'm going to do control or option Apple enter or control enter on the PC. And there's my video. So if I click on coming down the hill, oh, it paused the video. You see because it was already playing and this is, has a toggle play pause behavior. So we need to go back and fix that. So let's do that. Let's jump into our actions panel with our finish uh, with the with a button selected. We're going to come into our actions panel. So when we add these behaviors, when we added the behaviors to the button, it's actually generating some action script for us. And you can see right here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. It says, you know, if it's playing. We're going to stop it else, you know, or basically click and play or click and pause. We want to get rid of this pause. That way, if you click, no matter how many times you click, it will only play the video. So I'm going to do that in a couple of areas. I'm going to do that for my finish line button. I'm going to come into my coming down the hill button, do the same thing. So else do nothing. And in my intro button, I'm going to do the same as well. Now we're done with our actions panel, so I'm just going to drag it to the bottom of the screen. Now when we test our video, and I go to coming down the hill, it plays nice and smoothly, and when I go to finish line, it plays nice and smoothly, back to intro plays smoothly, coming down the hill, finish line, there you have it. So that's how you can build a quick easy video player in Flash. But what I also might want to do is I might want to maybe put a mask over my video. I mean, what the heck? Why not? Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to bring out my oval tool. First, I'm going to insert a layer. And we're going to call that video mask. I'm going to bring out my oval tool, and I'm just going to add a mask on my video. Just an oval mass there. There we go. Notice I have uh, some lines. I have a funky stroke applied to it. So I have a large stroke, and I'm using this kind of uh, edged or bubbly uh, stroke around it or fill around it as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually get rid of my little skin here that we applied with the play and mute buttons on it. So how do I do that? Well, I click on my video. I go to my component inspector. Let me bring that back onto the screen. I go to my skin. I click on it and I choose none. Click OK. Get rid of my component inspector. And it's now gone. Now, when we test the video, well, first, don't forget to do this. <laughs> click on the mask layer, right click, and choose mask. That way, it will mask the video for us. Now when we do Apple Enter or Control Enter to test the movie, 
we now have a pretty cool little mask applied to our video. Again, clicking on intro, coming down the hill, or finish line will give us nice transitions to our cue points. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next tutorial.